Tyler here with projectsinmetal.com. I wanted to make a quick video for you guys describing how you would set your compound on your lathe so that you could take uh, very, very small cuts um, accurately. Um, and I'm talking, you know, a half thou, three tenths. Um, you know, the normal hobby lathe is set up so that the dials have one one thousandth of an inch increments on them and so they're good for accuracies you know up to a thousandth or so uh, even a half thousandth if you want to try and split um, measurements between two uh, markings on your dial but uh, you know if you try and get three tenths or eight tenths or anything other than um, about a half thou it, it becomes a little bit uh, a little bit of guesswork and so I wanted to show you guys the uh, pretty simple method um, that's been described in a, a couple books that I've read, one of which is The Machinist's Bedside Reader by Guy Letard. And he goes through this process in great detail, including all the math involved, uh, and then um, basically describes the process for, you know, not only setting up your lathe so that uh, as you advance the compound one one-thousandth of an inch, in um, Z, you're advancing the tool in one ten thousandth of an inch in X, uh, and that's basically by setting your um, compound at 5.75 degrees. Um, but you don't really need to get your compound set exactly at 5.75 degrees to uh, use this method. You could use two degrees, four degrees, any any convenient uh, graduation on your compound will work. You just need to be able to do the math. So, um, like I said, Guy Letard describes that in The Machinist's Bedside Reader. And Harold Hall also goes through a little bit different method um, in his book, Lathe Work, A Complete Course. He also describes the process using uh, metric measurements, whereas Guy uh, describes the process in The Machinist's Bedside Reader using... Um, inch measurements or imperial measurements. So let me go ahead and uh, get started explaining how this process works. Basically like I alluded to earlier I have my compound set at approximately 5.75 degrees. I also have this surface here uh, parallel to the z-axis simply so there isn't any um, error uh, factored into this um, demonstration. Uh, this is not necessary. You do not need to have this surface set um, perfectly parallel to Z. I, I, like I said, I have it set uh, parallel just so that there's no error um, when I try and demonstrate this. This is not a tenths indicator, this is a thousandth indicator. And so um, for me to show how this works, I'm, I'm basically going to have to turn the dial here ten thousandths of an inch for it to go one one thousandth of an inch on the dial. And uh, if it was a, tenth indi a tenths indicator, I would be able to turn the dial here one one thousandth of an inch and it would show one tenth on the dial. And so let me go ahead and just show you. It's set to zero. The dial shows zero. I'm going to move it ten thousandths. There is ten. And you can see that it moved uh, it looks like it moved a little bit over um, one one thousandth of an inch. So there's probably some error here in my uh, five point seven five degree uh, attempt. Uh, obviously my graduations here on my compound are at every two and a half degrees so I was eyeballing that but the point is um, if you set your compound at approximately somewhere between five and a half and six degrees um, you're going to be able to turn the dial um, ten thousandths here for every one thousandth you advance the the tool in X. So if you needed to go um, three tenths in X, you would basically uh, turn the dial three thousandths this direction. And that's how you do it. Now, a couple words of caution. First of all, why would you need to know this method? You know, most hobby machinists don't need to to work to such tight tolerances. Um, every once in a while you'll have a project like I did where um, I had a Atlas MFC mill that I was rebuilding and the pulley uh, that goes around the spindle was worn out and the bushings had been um, <laughs> probably hadn't been oiled in years and so they had basically disintegrated so the pulley was damaged and I needed to turn new bushings and they were designed to be a press fit so I bored the pulley out to a few thousandths over its original size so I could clean it up 
and then I needed to bore the bushings so that they were about um, uh, a half a thou larger. Their outside diameter was about a half a thou larger than the inside diameter of the pulley, so that they would press in and um, and be a nice press fit. To try and do that on a lathe that has um, one one thousandth graduations on its dials isn't that easy, especially for a hobby machinist, uh, an amateur. Um, so it's it, basically what I did was I got to within about uh, two or three thousandths of the final size. And um, I had this set up already uh, at the proper angle so that I would be able to take off those last two or three thousandths using, um, using my compound here. And so I basically went, I think, I don't know, five thousandths at a time in this direction, and it was a half thou in that direction. And I took the last two or three or four passes about a half a thou at a time until I got exactly the size I was looking for. So that's the way you would do it normally. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to take off one ten thousandth of an inch per pass because, I mean, even with a really, really hard, uh, sharp high-speed steel tool, but you're not going to be able to take off a, a tenth, um, at least not reliably. So what will happen is you'll try and shave a tenth off and nothing will cut. So then you'll move the, the tool a tenth closer and try again and nothing will cut. And then you'll move the tool another tenth. So now you've moved it three or four tenths closer to the part. And all of a sudden it finally bites. And it might take four tenths. It might take five tenths because of tool flex due to you know lack of rigidity in your setup. So make sure you're not trying to take off a tenth at a time. Um, I would take you know maybe three tenths at the least. I would... Um, I, I would typically try and take a half hour or so at a time, but this is just a method to set up your lathe so you, you can easily um, move your tool in X to reduce the diameter of the part um, by tenths instead of by thousandths. So I hope that helps. If you guys have uh, any other questions or ideas for additional video tutorials that you think would be helpful, let me know, and if I have time to put them together, I will. Um, again, the books I mentioned were The Machinist's Bedside Reader by Guy Letard and um, Lathe Work, a, a Complete Course by Harold Hall, and I'll put those in the video when I edit it. Either book is a great book. Uh, the Machinist's Bedside Reader is full of projects and hints and tips and uh, fun anecdotes and stories from um, the machine shop, and uh, it's, as its title suggests, is a great book to have by your bedside. My wife doesn't get much of a kick out of it, but I, I sure enjoy reading it. And uh, there's actually three books now. There's The Machinist's uh, Bedside Reader, and then the, there's a second and third Bedside Reader out as well. Um, the other book by Harold Hall is a great book for the, um, the amateur machinist that is just trying to get started in lathe work, and it kind of goes through, as the title also suggests, a uh, complete introductory course to... Um, beginning lathe work. Thank you for watching and then, like I said if you guys have any questions or ideas for future videos please visit projectsandmetal.com and let me know. Thanks.